We've got an update. Before we get into today's video though, I do wanna let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, uh, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all are starting your week off on a wonderful note. Thanksgiving is on Thursday for all of y'all that are here in the US or for those of you guys that do celebrate. And I hope that you guys have a wonderful day no matter what you choose to do, whether you be at home by yourself with your feet kicked up, you and your dogs, you and your animals, whether you're working, if you're working, thank you, a little extra special thank you. And then for those of you guys that are with your family. So I hope you guys have a great, great day. And I'll see y'all on Friday. If y'all aren't out Black Friday shopping and tearing down the neighborhoods, let's not do that, okay? So in today's video, we're going to be talking about an update on the Taylor Parker Reagan Hancock case. Now we talked about this back in 2020. I will leave a tag up here for that video. If you haven't seen it, you can go watch it first or just look in, in my playlist. But we have an update because, as some of y'all may not know, Taylor Parker was found guilty. Now, I'm going to give you guys a whole rundown, a, a brief rundown of what happened and what was said in the trial in this video. And we learned about quite a lot. I'm going to hit the high notes with y'all. Real quick, though, if you guys don't already know, hi, my name is Christina. I do have a second channel, which is Casually Christina. We just do things more casually over there. I also have a Patreon. My Patreon is for 18 and up. Over there, we talk about more personal story times. We go live over there. It's a good time going live, chatting, talking true crime, all that good jazz over there. And then we also have a $2 tier right here. And that is for all things true crime that cannot go on YouTube due to their terms and policies. So if you want a little extra true crime from me, a little bit more edgy, a little bit less censored type of true crime, that's where you can find it is on my Patreon under the $2 tier. Those two links along with my Facebook, my Snapchat, and my Instagram are always linked down in the description box if you'd like to come and check me out. So a quick rundown. Back in 2020, Taylor Parker was arrested for the unthinkable against Reagan Hancock. Now let me tell you how these two young women met. Reagan Hancock, who was a beautiful 21 year old woman back in 2020. Reagan had a three year old daughter and she was pregnant with her second child and her and her husband could not be more happier. Reagan's mom lived nearby. Her name is Jessica, we now know. And she she was a mama's girl. They were very, very, very close, even though obviously her daughter was an adult and had her own family, but she was very close with her daughter. They talked every single day, multiple times a day, saw each other frequently, very close. Well, Reagan ended up in one of these Facebook groups and there's so many of them. I'm in about 50 of them myself. Y'all know some of y'all are in them too. And I'm telling y'all, my women out there, you Please just, just listen to me and, and watch this because these types of things happen and you got to be careful and you got to protect yourself. Reagan met Taylor in a Facebook group and became friends. Taylor even took Reagan and her husband's engagement photos for their wedding and she came and took their wedding photos. So the two women meet on the Facebook group. They go have coffee at Starbucks. They meet. Reagan ends up getting this woman to come and take her engagement photos and her wedding photos. So at this point, Reagan thinks she knows this woman, okay? She thinks they're friends at this point. What she didn't know was that Taylor has a lot of mental issues and had some nefarious motives. Now, it did come out in court that this Taylor was actually stalking other women, okay? So she had her eyes on other women for different reasons. And also during this time, Taylor was having issues with her boyfriend. 
And her boyfriend was allegedly going to leave her. And we've heard this story a million times. And so therefore, Taylor told him that she was pregnant. Now, according to Taylor's family that testified in this trial, when she told her family that she was pregnant, they none of them believed her. So many people knew that she was not pregnant and they talked to each other about it, but they never confronted her directly, he said. Um, and we did hear that throughout the trial from the witnesses. You know, they'd often say, well, we figured it would work itself out. Um, Shauna Pryor, uh, Parker's mother, said that on the stand. Several others did. Um, others thought it would end in a miscarriage, a fake miscarriage. They all thought this is another lie from Taylor. That's all she does is lie. We'll be expecting mm, in about three months a fake miscarriage. But as you can see, she wasn't just like faking this with her parents. She even was making like social media posts and posting ultrasound photos and talking about a c-section and there were text messages where she was talking about the heart rate of her baby girl that she was going to be having and she went to great lengths in this lie to make people believe that she was pregnant i mean look at the paternity photo shoot she even took i mean it was extensive she was driving this point home that she was pregnant and she was about to have a baby girl. Like literally, that's what her family thought. They didn't think anything else of it. They didn't think that this person, that they know lies like that, which first of all, if you lie like that, somebody needs to sit you down somewhere. If you're expecting that from your child, like how devastating, right? As a parent to like, uh-oh, there's my daughter. She's faking another pregnancy, you know, well... Don't worry, we'll let you cry on our shoulder when you pretend to lose it again. Like, that's crazy, but that's what the family said in court. But this time, Taylor wasn't planning on faking nothing, honey. She was planning on coming up with a baby. She was talking to Reagan. Pregnant Reagan was at home alone with just her and her three-year-old daughter. Her husband was at work. She came over there and brutally, brutally killed her. Removed the baby from Reagan's belly and left her there. It is said that their small daughter ran into a closet to hide and that's where she was found. I cannot. There was a ton of defensive wounds, which means Reagan really fought for her life and for her unborn baby's life, but didn't make it. Reagan's mom couldn't get a hold of her and she thought she's she's big and pregnant. She's at home alone with this with the baby. She's not responding to me. I better go over there and check. And when her mama opened that door, and saw her baby girl laying on the floor in a pool of blood, she flipped out as any person or mother or anything could imagine. Of course, she called 911, da, 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 da. Simultaneously, at the same exact time, Taylor was speeding down the road with the baby and gets pulled over by the police because she's speeding. The cop comes up to the window and Taylor has this bloody baby and the placenta stuffed down in her pants and starts telling the police that she had a baby. They rush her to the hospital. She doesn't want to let them check her, which is a telltale sign. We've heard this story before. We just did the Ashley Bush story. If you haven't watched that, you guys should go and watch it because this literally the whole entire thing just about deja vu just happened. And they ended up fig putting two and two together and figuring out that it could possibly have been her and arrested her and the baby didn't make it. Okay, so we get it, that's what happened. Now Taylor's been on trial. Things that have come up in the trial, y'all. She tried to get found incompetent. They said she's plenty competent. She's been in trouble in the jail many times and guess what they found in her cell, y'all? They found a full entire map of the jail, seemingly like, I can't say what was in her head, neither can the judge, but a plan, almost like an escape plan. She's sitting up in the jail planning an escape from the jail and you did your crime in that way too. Like, anyways, it was so bad. They were so frustrated with her that the judge even allowed the prosecutors to show that to the jury. That like she literally had a full colored out map and scheme and uh, whatever of the jail. She was caught with multiple things of contraband in her room, which contraband can be anything from a staple found on the floor, but I doubt it. I, I, it, was, it was other types of things. Now, the defense of Taylor. In the defense's closing arguments in order to save her some way, somehow, from the death penalty, they said that the system had failed her. 
and that so many people knew that she wasn't pregnant and that even her own mom knew and thought that she wasn't pregnant and in the end that she would fake it. So their whole stance was that like everybody failed her. The system failed her, nobody helped her. Well, my opinion on that is the system's failed a lot of us. You can't blame the system failing somebody on that type of heinous, and she was plotting it. And that's another scary thing too, y'all, is this woman was stalking other people on Facebook that she had met and it just happened to be Reagan. So how many, y'all Y'all just, you just can't talk to strangers, you guys. You just, I, I hate to say it, I, I get it. I get it, I get it, ladies. I, I like to make new friends too. I have stopped here recently because of some some crazy things, but you know, like, I feel y'all. Some of some of us, we want to be friends with everybody. We want to invite everybody over to our houses. We we want to kick the door open and feed everybody in the neighborhood. Come on in, take a shower, make yourself at home. But you just can't. Now, Miss Jessica, who is Reagan's mom, she addressed Taylor as an evil piece of flesh demon. And she said that my baby was alive and still fighting for her babies when you tore her open and ripped her baby from her stomach. Oh my gosh, you... You got to, I just pray, I pray for that mama's heart. I pray for her to, you know, not have hatred built up in her heart because it's got to be hard. When you walk in and you find your daughter like that, oh gosh. Okay, real quick. This is going to be your trigger warning. I'm going to give you guys the details as much as I can. And it is, it's a, it's a bit, I'm going to give it to you best as I can. So if you can't handle a little bit of, don't, don't. Skip to this right here. Skip to this number. So as previously reported by Law and Crime, Taylor Parker sliced Hancock from hip to hip using a scalpel and she pulled out her uterus. Oh my gosh, you guys. Reagan, who was approximately 34 weeks pregnant, struggled with Taylor. She fought her and tried to fight her off of her, big and pregnant. She fought as hard as she could. And authorities described defensive wounds on her hands, among other injuries. One of her fingers was dislocated and the other was almost cut all the way off. Investigators determined that there was more than a hundred stab wounds. And with at least 39 on her head. Her skull was fractured in five different places, likely struck with both the blunt and clawed end of the hammer. She was also likely beaten with a four pound jar full of pink and blue sand from her wedding. Authorities initially overlooked the scalpel as it was lodged in the victim's neck. Did you hear that? She was stabbed over a hundred times, 39 of them in her head. The scalpel, investigators didn't find it at first because it was so deeply lodged in her. And then she cut her from hip to hip and pulled her uterus out, pulled her baby out and jumped in that car and left and held that baby like it was hers and sped down the road. It is even said that Reagan Hancock's fingernails were found in the placenta. It just makes, how did they get in there? Was she trying to hold it in? Was she trying to fight? Listen, y'all ask me all the time how I feel about the death penalty. And I always say, you know, it's, it's a hard one. It's a real hard one. You know what I mean? Because I believe in justice, even as somebody myself that has had justice served against me. And y'all know I'll be the first one to tell you I deserved it. This is one of them cases where it's like, if anybody's going to get it, I'm glad I'm not in that decision, but if you're going to give it out, it needs to be somebody that, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. Y'all figure it out. Y'all make your own decisions because, and I know a lot of y'all are going to say like, yeah, but the death penalty is easier. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. She's going to go sit on death row, okay? That's a part a lot of people I think forget about. They don't just go straight to like a chair or something. They have to sit on death row, which is the worst it is the worst of the worst, okay? Life in prison, when you're out, out in like public uh, general population, people learn to live out there. I've told y'all the stories. People have their own families. If you're in a male's prison, some men get wives in there. When you're in a female's prison, some women get husbands in there. You know, they have families. They, they claim people as their children. They get in relationships with officers. They go to the store. It's, it's, a, it's a little world inside of another world. It ain't fun to me by no means, but you adapt, right? We, we all, people adapt. Death row is a whole nother ball game. 
you know, go and watch some YouTube videos or something. She's going to be on death row for a while too. I mean, usually people sit on death row for 10, 20, 30 years. They can sit on there for a long time waiting, tick tock, tick talk, waiting for the day that they're going to die. I may feel like this in this moment and in another time I may not feel like this. But like in this moment, maybe I feel like the family should get to decide. You know, like the whole Parkland, that whole situation, like that was, that was hard. That was, and then now you've got this situation. I don't know, you guys, it's hard. It's hard, 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 hard. But in that mama, after all that I told y'all, her mother walked in and found her. Mm -mm -mm. The closing arguments by the state, the people that were obviously against in this court situation, Taylor, the woman who did all this. In the closing arguments, prosecutor Kelly Crisp showed jurors a crime scene photo of Reagan Hancock soaked in blood on the floor. She told the jurors that Parker needed to be sentenced to death because she is a danger. So she actually sh had had this picture of Reagan and passed it around to every juror. And you know what? The jury went out and deliberated for one hour before they came back and said, death penalty, death penalty. I actually hope that they open up everything so we can, so we can find out everything that she did. Because I, I feel like, and I'm not talking about the Reagan part, because God bless, let her have peace, let her family heal. But like this situation with Taylor, it is so scary to know that it was women, and we talk about this all the time, you don't have your guard up a lot of the times with other women, unless you've ever been really hurt by one. If you have, you know what I'm talking about. But if you haven't, you meet somebody on Facebook, you just want to be friends. Let's go to Starbucks and have coffee. Let's go meet at Target and go Christmas shopping. Oh my gosh, it's so fun. Let's go to the Goodwills. You know what I mean? But you just never know. And this woman came and took her wedding photos and her engagement photos. And now every time that husband who was raising their daughter all alone sees his wedding photos or his engagement photos, I hope they're not tainted. I hope they can heal. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think that she got the punishment that she deserved? Do you think that she got the consequence she deserved? Or do you think that she should have got life? What do you think? Let me know down below. Other than that, I love y'all. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh my gosh. I love you guys. Hugs, 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 hugs. Happy Thanksgiving, you guys. I'll see y'all on Friday. Have a good one. Love you guys. Bye.